Radius on the under shaft fractures. The approaches. At the end of the approaches, I'm going to summarize all the common approaches and the interval between the muscles and which nerve supply the muscles. You expose the ulna between the flexor and the extensor carbi and naris. The ulna is subcutaneous. If you expose the distal third of the ulna, you need to worry about the dorsal cutaneous branch of the ulnar nerve. It's about 5 cm proximal to the wrist joint. How about the radius? We can use volar henry or dorsal Thompson approach. How do you do the Henry approach? You begin the incision one centimeter lateral to the biceps insertion and extend it distally to the radial styloid. The interval between the flexor carbi radialis and brachioradialis distally. When you go a little bit proximal, the interval will be between the pronator teres and the brachioradialis. So the brachioradialis on the lateral side and the flexor carbi radialis distally and the pronator teres proximally on the medial side. Between them is the interval. This is the approach that's routinely used. That volar approach is good for the middle to distal third radius. It can be used also for proximal third. However, some people like to use the Thompson dorsal approach in the proximal third. If you do the Henry approach, you got to ask yourself, where is the radial artery? Where is the superficial radial nerve? Where is the palmar cutaneous branch of the median nerve? Where I put my retractors? What is behind my retractors? What is the difference between Henry approach and modified Henry approach? Just remember distally the median nerve is between the palmaris longus and the flexor carbi radialis. So in general, if you go on the lateral border of the flexor carbi radialis sheath, you probably will be okay. If you go proximally with Henry approach, you will go in the interval between the brachioradialis and the pronator teres, and you need to protect the posterior osseous nerve. Thompson dorsal approach, the incision begins anterior to the lateral epicondyle and the interval is between the extensor carboridialis bravus and the extensor digitorum communis. The supinator is between these two muscles. Identify the posterior interosseous nerve as it exits the supinator muscle. You need to protect this nerve. So, in general, at the junction of the mid and the upper third of the radial shaft, the posterior interosseous nerve is at risk. So, let's summarize the approaches. So, if you expose the ulna, it will be a dorsal approach between the extensor carbi and nerves, PIN, and the flexor carbi and nerves, ulna nerve. How about the radius? Henry approach, proximally between the brachioradialis radial nerve and the pronator teres, median nerve, distally between the brachioradialis radial nerve and the flexor carbi radialis median nerve. The dorsal Thompson approach, you go between the extensor carbi radialis travers radial nerve and the extensor digitorum communis, posterior interosseous nerve. So if you don't remember anything, 
and you're approaching the radius, the muscles in the volar approach are all median. So you need to go between something median and the brachioradialis on the side. So the muscles in the dorsal aspect of the forearm and on the side, the radial. So between median and radial, whatever you are up or down. How about Thompson approach between the extensor carbaridialis pravus and the extensor digitorum carbonius? When extend the rest, it's radial. When it goes to the fingers, it is posterior interosseous nerve. So between the radial and the posterior interosseous nerve. All muscles in the posterior aspect or the dorsal aspect of the forearm are supplied by the radial nerve or the posterior interosseous nerve. All muscles in the volar aspect of the forearm are supplied by the median nerve except the under half of the profundus and the flexor carbi and nares. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.